welcome back students so we were discussing purification of actinides and uh, if you remember last time we discussed uh, how to purify our uh, obtained thorium in its pure form so thorium was uh, uh, obtained in the form of uh, oxidized species that was called thoria this thoria was converted into a volatile species uh, by passing iodine vapors through it uh, and definitely it was at high temperature this volatile compound was then passed through a hot filament and uh, a hot filament caused to decompose this compound and again iodine vapors and thorium in power form was obtained today we are uh, going to an extraction of uranium so the main source of uranium is pitch blend this Pitch blend is also called uranite. This is uh, an example of uh, the rock. So this rock can be different, obtained from different uh, sources from different region of the world, and it uh, the the internal contents of the ore can also vary depending upon the nature and uh, place of the uh, source. Normally, it contains uh, uranium oxide in this form or uranium oxide where two oxygens are attached. In this case, uh, eight oxygen with three uranium and two oxygen with one uranium. So these two uranium oxides are main portion, main uh, element, main uh, substituents or constituents of this uh, uranite or pitch blend. Now, how it is processed? So in the first, uh, in first process, in first case or step, uh, concentration is applied and concentration is the process in which the concentration of the required species in its ore is increased. It means since this uh, the, the rock contains a large amount of impurities, most of the, 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 the contents will be impurities while some of contents will be uh, uranium. So in order to get more concentration in the uh, material in to, for uh, processing it further we have to increase concentration of the required element and that is uranium in this case so concentration is uh, the first process which is carried out and for concentration uh, we have to deal with the rocks somehow uh, by in physical uh, way and physical way is crushing of this uh, rock is the first step in order to convert it into powder and this powder uh, now uh, provides much more area for reaction uh, so the, uh, the the same species as we have discussed so we, we we have to process it we have to treat it with uh, some concentrated H2SO4 or some other species so in case of concentrated H2SO4 or any paste uh, the paste is now subjected to gravity separation and the, the the advantage of gravity separation is only to separate two species two uh, phases of the same mixture or of the same solution uh, which are uh, different from each other in terms of masses so heavier mass is separated from lighter and in this case lighter masses are normally impurities so impurities are separated by a simple gravity separation and a relatively uh, pure rock or pure material is obtained in the first step then we move toward roasting so roasting is the process where this a material which was comparatively rich in uranium uranium now it will be heated up and at high temperature in a reverberatory furnace in the presence of air what happens removal of volatile impurities such as sulfur arsenic and antimony will carry out and how these impurities are separated when sulfur present in this uranium rich portion of the pitch blend uh, so this sulfur reacts with oxygen in the presence of high high temperature in reverberatory furnace so sulfur is converted into sulfur dioxide now sulfur dioxide you are well aware of the nature of the uh, sulfur dioxide which is a gas and separation of gas from solid 
then it uh, has no problem to be separated. Arsenic is also converted into arsenic oxide, which is a gas. Antimony is also uh, obtained as a gas, and these gaseous material are now separated from the uh, from the material. And now, if you look at the process, so we dealt with two processes: for concentration and roasting. In concentration, we separated lighter impurities, while in roasting, those species which were actually bonded with the uranium in one way or another way, uh, and we carried out the breaking of chemical bond, and these materials are now converted into gases. So, gases uh, are now separated uh, from the mixture in this method, in this step, uh, and then the roasted ore which contains uh, relatively more uranium oxide in pure form and least uh, impurities now it is uh, uh, treated with sodium carbonate and sodium nitrate the whole mass is now fused uh, on the hearth of the furnace or on the floor of the furnace and sodium uranate is obtained now this is roasted uh, uh, the, the roasted material obtained in this step after removal of this gaseous material again it is uh, that material is now treated with sodium carbonate and sodium nitrate um, in order to convert it into sodium uranate uh, which is uh, easy to be processed further now then come, comes the leaching with h2so4 now the fused mass which we discussed uh, sodium uranate was obtained uh, in the form of fused mass. This is now uh, uh, treated with dilute H2SO4 uh, where sodium uranate changes to soluble uranyl sulfate uh, and impurities such as lead sulfate and radium sulfate they remain insoluble. Now that was a basic mass. Fused mass was actually uh, in basic region or basic pH so this basic mass is now treated with acidic mass or dilute H2SO4. So now the pH is adjusted it means. So sodium uranate which was basic this is now converted. Yeah, this sodium uranate is uh, soluble in acidic solution uh, and impurities like lead and radium sulfates they remain insoluble. And now separation of soluble and insoluble material is easy. It is carried out with the help of filtration. This is a general reaction, not general reaction, rather this is the reaction of this statement. This is sodium uranate treated with two moles of H2SO4. Now uranyl sulfate is obtained plus sodium sulfate plus water. Now these materials are soluble. They will be obtained in the filtrate and the uh, insoluble material are easily separated in this step. Then after filtration, the filtrate is treated with sodium carbonate again. And this uranyl sulfate plus excess of sodium carbonate. Now again in this step, we have to get some sodium salt of uranate like we obtained in the last step, uh, in the uh, previous step we discussed. So in this case, iron, aluminium, nickel, cobalt, magnesium, they are precipitated out and they are insoluble as their insoluble carbonates. So these insoluble carbonates by treating this mass with sodium carbonate, now they are insoluble and again insoluble species can be obtained, their precipitates can be, can be separated from the mass. The uranyl sulfate, it reacts with sodium carbonate to give sodium tricarbonate to uranate. And this is the formula of, uh, this is the reaction of, of uh, uh, uranyl sulfate with sodium carbonate once again. And definitely it again, uh, it, it is uh, at room temperature or in the presence of sulfur H2SO4. So sodium uh, uranate in this form, tricarbonate sodium tricarbonate uranate this is obtained is uh, uh, almost final product up to up till now now this sodium uh, again it is treated with h2so4 
सोडियम यूरानेट और ट्राई कार्बोनेट सोडियम ट्राई कार्बोनेट यूरानेट सो फिल्ट्रेट कंटेनिंग दिस कंपाउंड नाउ इट इज वी गॉट ट्राई कार्बोनेट और यूरानेट स्पीशी नाउ इट इज अगेन ट्रीटेड विद H2SO4 एंड अपॉन ट्रीटमेंट विद H2SO4 व्हाट हैपेंस द स्पीशी द द होल मास इज बॉइल्ड uh and all volatile materials if they are present so they are evaporated and then after evaporation of readily volatile material yellow precipitate of sodium diuranate is obtained and once again since we are dealing or we are obtaining this yellow mass in the form of precipitate it is insoluble so its separation is no matter and we can separate it simply by filtration this is the uh, sodium tricarbonate uranate plus h2so4 so this sodium uh, diuranate plus carbon dioxide plus sodium carbonate this is the whole reaction now the this mass or this species is treated with ammonium carbonate and upon reaction or upon treatment with ammonium carbonate we will get ammonium salt instead of sodium salt Uh, and this ammonium salt is now soluble uh, and insoluble impurities are separated again by filtration uh, now filtrate is boiled to give yellow crystals of ammonium uh, diuranate now these yellow crystals are now separated conversion into uranium oxides uh, of these two forms once this is u3 Uh, O8. First, it is converted into U3O8, and then to UO2. Now, this U3O8 and UO2, this is carried out in this step. For example, this diuranate is calcinated, and calcination is generally carried out at high temperature. So, it is dissociated at in the presence of high temperature. So, U3O8, which is a black mass, is obtained. Uh, and this mass is now uh, uh, obtained uh, or it is reduced uh, with hydrogen or charcoal which is a carbon so upon reduction yeah after reduction uranium oxide is obtained now conversion of uranium oxide to pure uranium here two steps are involved method 1 contains several reactions now uranium oxide is treated with chlorine at high temperature uranium chloride yellow crystals of uranyl chlorides they are obtained uranyl chloride is again subjected to chlorine plus carbon which is which acts as a reducing agent so uh, uranium in plus 4 uh, state uh, or uranium chloride which is a volatile species is obtained plus oxygen gas uranium chloride is now further treated with uh, another reducing agent which is uh, comparatively stronger than the carbon so sodium is now used as reducing agent and pure uranium is obtained plus sodium chloride and these materials are separated from each other method 2 contains two reactions this uranium oxide is treated with hf uh, which is in vapor form at high temperature so uranium fluoride plus water is obtained water can be easily separated and this uranium fluoride is then treated with reducing agent at high temperature in a pressure vessel uh, and uranium plus magnesium fluoride slag is obtained so this slag can easily be skimmed from the whole of the mass thank you very much